of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum invites you to enjoy life. Life with Luigi, a new comedy show created by Cy Howard and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carroll Nash, with Alan Reed as Pasquale. friends, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum is a typically American product that appeals to people of all ages and nationalities in all parts of our country. And the Wrigley people feel that Life with Luigi is a typically American radio program, a friendly, enjoyable show that sort of symbolizes the American spirit of tolerance and goodwill. So the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum are glad to bring you Life with Luigi each week and have you join them in this pleasant half hour's entertainment. And now let's read Luigi's letter as he writes about his adventures in America to his Mama Basco in Italy. Dear Mama Mia, this is Sunday, May 21st. It's a big day in the United States. It's called I Am an American a Day. Of course, I'm not got my citizen papers yet, so for me, is it going to be. I'm a wannabe in America in a day. <laughs> How do I not, to Mamma Mia? There's a 48 states here, and they all are working together to give the people what they need. For instance, uh, men catches the fish. Idaho grows the potatoes. Kansas gives the corn. Minnesota the wheat. And Texas takes the credit. <laughs> also, they got... They got lots of fruits here, like oranges. Over here, California is a grow the oranges, and a Florida is a squeeze them. <laughs> and that's the way it is. Everybody works hard, tries to be a good citizen, obeys the laws, and if there's something you don't understand, he can write as a congressman. <laughs> so far, I'm not allowed to vote yet, but I must expect to... And every election day, I'm going to stay near the polling of boots for, from 7 in the morning until they close, so the citizens should get a good look at my face. <laughs> Mamma mia, I can hardly wait for that big day when they're going to let me vote. I'm going to walk in the little boot with a four pencils and a vote for everybody. <laughs> anyway, like I'm started to write to you, this Sunday is going to be a big celebration here on the Lake Shore. And now I'm going to my night school class where Miss Spalding, my teacher, is going to tell us what we're supposed to do to take a part in the I Am American Day celebration. America, I love you. You like a papa to me. From ocean to ocean. All right, class, quiet, please, please. Now I'll call the roll. Mr. Basco? Present. Mr. Howitt? Present. Mr. Olson? Present. Mr. Schultz? Absent. <laughs> Absent? Yeah, I'm going to the butcher shop. <laughs> to the butcher shop? Why? I want to go where the wild goose goes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, fellow boobers. <laughs> Mr. Schultz. Oh, smile, Miss Balding. Be happy. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. Now, class, since this Sunday is I Am an American Day, I ask you to study in your civics books the chapter on what makes a good citizen. Now, uh, yes, Mr. Basco? Miss Balding, we all going to get it to the pack to watch the ceremony? Yes, we're meeting at noon at the main entrance. Incidentally, I have a surprise announcement to make about that right after class. Now, I Ms. would... Miss Balding? Yes, Mr. Basco? You think it's going to rain on a Sunday? <laughs> well, I hope not. Now, in our civics lesson class, I What's would... What's this a surprise, Miss Spalding? Mr. Basco, will you let me finish my sentence? When Luigi gets curious, a life term I couldn't finish his sentence. <laughs> you will have to hold your questions until later, Mr. Basco. Now, getting back to citizenship, who can tell me how a person becomes a citizen? Mr. Horowitz, will you tell us? With pleasure. You can become a citizen by waiting five years and getting your papers. Or, if you're in a hurry, you could get born here, and that automatically makes you a citizen. <laughs> That's rather a quaint way of putting it, but all right. <laughs> Mr. Horowitz, you may tell us some of the traits of a good citizen. Traits? Yeah. Well, uh, uh, 
Sorry, Miss Spaulding, I ran out of quaint vase. <laughs> well, suppose we call on someone else. Suppose. <laughs> well, who can tell us some of the qualities of a good citizen, Mr. Basco? A good citizen takes good care of his citizen purpose. <laughs> no, Then no. he keeps him in a drawer. <laughs> no, Mr. Basco. All right, I'm going to keep him in a vault, but every Monday morning I'm going to take a peek. <laughs> Miss Spaulding, it is becoming rather apparent that you are running into difficulty. May I volunteer the correct answer? Oh, I hate a man with brains. <laughs> Please, Mr. Schultz. <laughs> Go on, Mr. Olson. The qualities of a good citizen. Yo ho. Uh, a good citizen always obeys the laws of the government. He always exercises his rights under the Constitution. Go on. Furthermore, a real genuine citizen understands the general workings of his government, and he keeps himself informed. And uh, what else, Mr. Olson? Well, uh, well, he is, uh, he is a good father. He uh, stays home nights with his family. He uh, keeps out of uh, trouble. He doesn't drink or gamble. And twice a year, he simonizes his halo. <laughs> <laughs> please, please, Mr. Schultz. Now, class, here's the special announcement I was going to make to you after class. Oh, what is now, this Sunday is I Am an American Day, and as you know, there will be 15,000 people assembled in the park, as well as all the public schools. And this class has been selected to sit on the speaker stand. What an honor, that's oh, wonderful. wonderful. Jung, what, what, what's the reason? <laughs> well, I thought it was a lovely reason. This class represents the oldest school children in the city. With the oldest school kids? Yeah. Last one in the social security line is a rotten <laughs> And I might add, with the youngest spirit. You're right, oh, Miss Bowling. That's right. right. Yes, sir. Well, class, that's a surprise, and I think it'll be a wonderful experience for you, especially when you consider that the principal speaker will be a judge from Washington, D.C., huh? Judge Hal B. Reeves, and he's flying in especially from Washington. Mamma mia. The judge and a wee sitting with him on a speaker's platform. Oh, well, Pasquale hears about this. He's really going to be excited. Luigi, the only thing that would excite Pasquale would be if the judge would also be a justice of the peace. (laughs) (laughs) Well, maybe so, Schultz. But I'm sure Pasquale would be interested in a big Washington judge like Halaby Reeves. His honor. Only if he's single. Rosa! 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 Come on out of the kitchen. I want to talk to you. All right, Papa! Rosa, between you and Ethan and Luigi with that I'm an American today, I'm never going to make a match. I gave Luigi two tickets to take you to the movies last night. What did you see? Champagne for Caesar. But all I saw in the lobby was root beer. Always a pink and a fool. <laughs> Never mind that. You sat with Luigi for three hours. He didn't even hold your hand. He couldn't, Papa. Couldn't? Why not? There was a little boy sitting between us. <laughs> a little boy? What was he doing between you and Luigi? He was holding the popcorn. <laughs> what am I going to do? Ross, so what's more important to you? Love, a marriage, and the kids, or just eating? Don't answer that. <laughs> Look, Tell me, my little bambina, when Luigi brought you home last night, did he try to kiss you? (laughs) No, Papa. Did you try to kiss him? No, Papa. Am I supposed to? What do you think? I got to kiss him? (laughs) It is a Friday already. I thought you could have talked him into taking on that picnic Sunday, but now he's all tied up with that American day in the park. The trouble with that boy is he's so full of American that patriotism, he's got no time to think about a marriage. If only I could have figured out a way to make him feel small, no good, not wanted. Then he's liable to come crawling back of here. Uh, uh, wait, I think I got an idea. Oh, here comes Luigi now, Papa. Good. Ooh, what am I going to do to him? Mm. Hello, Pasquale. Luigi, my friend. 
Hello, Luigi, hello, hello. Hello, Rosa. Go back in the kitchen and eat. Luigi, I was going to bother you about going on a picnic with Rosa this Sunday again, but now I can't because you guess what's happened. What? I'm just got a telephone call from your night school. <laughs> what an honor. Honor? Yes. It seems that uh, Judge Hallaby Reeves was going to be the only speaker of the day, but... Uh, now, there's going to be another one. Who's that going to be? Uh, you? Me? Speaking in front of 15,000 people? Uh? How you know that? Well, it was from Mrs. Spalding herself. But the why? Why? Uh, well, uh, it seems that the people have decided you're going to get your citizen papers in three years, uh, so they name you future American in 1953, and you got to give a talk on how much you want to be an American. Pasquale, it done is impossible I should have got such an honor. To speak on the same platform with a judge Reeves. What am I going to do? You're going to speak. You're not going to play canazza. <laughs> <laughs> you happy little banana nose? Yeah, but I'm... But I'm, I don't know what to say. I'm just to come from school and Miss Spalding has told me nothing. Uh, that's because she's a smart. Uh, she didn't want to make a Schultz and the rest of them were jealous. Oh. Ask Rose if you don't believe me. Oh, I don't believe you, Pasquale, but... Mamma mia. Future American of a 1953. Eh? That's hard to believe. Well, I call up a Miss Spalding. Well, is it... Is there no school for a weekend and, a, and I'm not got a Miss Spalding's a home number? I'm not going to see until Sunday. No, I'm going to see it until Sunday in the park. Hey, Pasquale, what, what kind of speech am I going to make? Ah, Luigi, there you've got a problem. Naturally, for 15,000 people, it's got to be very important. And you ain't just going to read it from the paper like it was no. a nothing. You've got to memorize. Memorize? But here's a Friday night I'm only got till Sunday. So what if you stay up a couple of nights? As long as the people see your speeches come from the heart... Don't worry, Luigi. I'm going to help you out. Hey, you will, Pasquale. Sure. You know you can always count on me, little cabbage bush. Nice. I'm always ready to help you out with any information I got. And you know I can squeeze the facts out of my head like a sponge. <laughs> That's right, Pasquale. You're the biggest sponge ahead I know. <laughs> That's a funny thing. When I'm saying it's a come out of different. <laughs> Anyway, Luigi, I was thinking that for such a big day, you've got to start out the very big, big words like, uh, Distinguished gatherers of this uh, esteemed assemblage. What? <laughs> Pasquale, what's that mean? I don't know. I once heard it at a stag party. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a very important, the distinguished gatherers of this esteemed assemblage. Yeah, but Pasquale, if I'm going to write a speech like that, I'm... I'm going to have to stay up every minute. But it's a word to Luigi. You were the port in the mail. Yeah, I guess I am. Sure, now go, go. Go in your store and start thinking. I'm going to commit it later in the hell. All right, the Pasquale. Goodbye. Goodbye and thank you. Goodbye, goodbye. Distinguished you got this. Have, have this system assembly. Oh, 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 oh
Get a few packages and always keep some handy. And now let's turn to page two of Luigi Vasco's letter to his mother in Italy. And so, Mamma Mia, you don't believe what an honor your son Luigi has got. I'm going to speak before 15,000 people today in a park. That's right. They made me the future American of 1953. For two days and nights and now I'm had no sleep, but it was a word because I've got a wonderful speech prepared with a beautiful words. Mamma Mia, I'm a hope I'm going to say everything good. Because I'm a feel like our chicken of Josephine uh, when we took her to the fair and she's a lost the egg lay in the contest. <laughs> she was a son never, she's a drop everything. <laughs> well, now I'm going to the park and I meet my classmates. <laughs> Sure, 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 here I am. Oh, hello, Luigi. <laughs> Himmel, did you ever see so many people packed together? No. <laughs> it's like Coney Island without sand. Yeah. <laughs> Where's the rest of the glass? Well, I guess they'll be here any minute. Mm. Mamma mia, shoots, shoots, I'm, I'm so nervous. Nervous? What have you got to be nervous about? Because we are sitting on the platform? Listen, if they throw things at the speaker, you got plenty of time to duck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but... Distinguished governors of this important assembly, the the qualifications of judges. What's the matter, Louise? You sound like a politician who was caught with his hand in a voter's pocket. <laughs> <laughs> sure, see, you're going to find out the sooner, so I'm going to tell you anyway. I'm a speaking it today. Well, I'm glad to hear that, Luigi. What's the matter? You had laryngitis? You couldn't speak for the last few days? <laughs> no, sure, sir. Besides the judge. I'm going to speak, too. <laughs> What's the matter, Luigi? Do you expect the judge to run out of breath like a poopy dog? <laughs> no. No, sure, sir. You're not listening. Yeah, yeah. I was uh, selected as a, as a future American of a 1953. Luigi, Hello, Luigi. Luigi's trying to tell me he was selected American for 1953 and he's going to speak today. <laughs> Luigi, where did you get such an idea? <laughs> yeah, the, the whole thing sounds like a yoke. <laughs> no, it's not a joke. That's not a joke. Is it true? Miss Spalding has not told you because she's no one to hurt your feelings. I'm going to spend the two days, the two nights of the rest of my speech. I'm, well, I'm going to have any sleep. Well, <laughs> maybe Luigi is right, ah, though. Stop. Our little Wiener Schnitzel has got the delusions of the brain. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, here comes Miss Balding. She will settle it. Hello, everybody. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. My, don't we look nice and dressed oh, up? Hello, hello, hello Miss Balding. Hello. Uh, Miss Balding, uh, Miss Balding, uh, tell him. Ain't I supposed to make speech here today? What? Luigi thinks he's supposed to make a talk. He memorized the whole speech. Well, as far as I know, Mr. Basco, the judge is the one and only speaker on the program today. Lu Luigi, who, who told you you were supposed to speak? Pasquale. Miss Balding, he's a said you picked me because I'm a future American of 1953 and that I got to make a speech before all the people. Oh, that scheming Pasquale. Has he got you for shimmers? <laughs> <laughs> Miss Balding... Am I not supposed to make a speech? No, Mr. Basco. I think Mr. Pasquale was just pulling your leg. Pulling his leg? He just twisted it off. <laughs> sure, see, you're no friend of mine. You're glad to see me suffer like no, Luigi, no, wait, no, don't talk like that. It's not Schultz's fault. No, no, no. All of you are not to my friends. I'm going, and I'm never coming back to night school no, no more. No, wait a minute. Hold this other hand, Harvey. No. Getting moving, Luigi. No, no, let me go. No, no, no. I'm, I'm sorry if I made a joke too much, but don't blame me for what Pasquale did. Day and night, day and night, I'm studying the speech. What a fool I'm no, a bit. You are coming with us. Come no, on. no, no. I'm, I'm not going to sit on the platform. Oh, please, Mr. Basco. No, no, let me go. I'm going to go home. I'm going to want to see nobody. I'm a disgrace to myself. All right, Luigi, you ask for it. No, please. Now, Schultz, Schultz, put me down. The way I figure it, I'm carrying a dozen stubborn salamis. <laughs> you 
feel better now, Mr. Basco. Luigi, Miss Spaulding is talking to you. Mr. Schultz, you see how you have to be careful with your humor sometime. Yeah, I wish there was some way I could make it up to him. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a disappointing announcement to make. At this time, our guest, Judge Reeves, was supposed to address you. However, we have been waiting for him and expected him to arrive by now. But unfortunately, his plane has been delayed. It seems, therefore, that it remains for me to close the meeting. We will therefore rise and all together... Sing the star. Wait, 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 wait. What? Mr. Schultz. Sure, why not? Mr. Schmieger, we got it here, a fella who give you a speech better than that Washington judge ever thought of making. Well, I Schultz, don't know. Schultz, what are you doing? I... Listen, everybody, listen. This fella, he studied his speech for days now. Now, what do you say? You're going to hear a speech from one of the gang, one of us, or you want to go home? Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Basco, you you better get up there. I I know you can do it. All right. I present our speaker, Mr. Luigi Basco, from Miss Spalding's class in the North Holstead State Night School. Extinguish the gatherers that the... I mean, it's distinguished the gossip as I... I mean... I mean... Friends, I'm a scared. <laughs> you know, believe it, but, but two days and two nights I'm a stay up to memorize a speech, and now I'm a forget to the whole thing. <laughs> All I'm going to think of now is a boat. Here's a year and a half ago I'm a coming to America. In that boat. America. Then we spent... We passed the Statue of Liberty... Beautiful lady of peace. And I could hardly wait to get off of that boat to hear somebody speak English. And then the boat is a duck and I'm a run down a gang of plank. Then I'm I'm never forget it. Was a little boy playing. And I'm a heard of my first American words. Bibbity bobbity boo. <laughs> I don't know what that means. But uh, now I'm a no. Yeah, now I'm a no. It means Filigadushin and a Shimarushka. That's right. You put them together and what do you get? America. Laugh and a sing. That's America. What can I play? That's America. Joker how you want, the speaker how you want. That's America. Americans. And don't let anybody tell you you can't say what you want. You can't vote how you want. Because then, then you change, you're mad. And then people like me, we, we become Americans. But it's, it's, a, it's a no more America. Well, I'm a future America. And I'm a hope for America that... Uh, well, I'm a... I'm a want for America. I'm a... Thanks for letting me speech. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Mr. Luigi Basco, student in the North Halstead Street Night School... We were all well, to Luigi, to made a fine fool of yourself. Everybody was so insulted with that ibbery bibbery talk that they wouldn't even applaud. I know, Miss Quelly. Now maybe you know enough to stay in your own backyard and don't be a big shot with that dignity baloney. Please, Pasquale, let me alone. If you was with a rose at the picnic, you would be singing and dancing instead of wanting to kill yourself. Oh, Luigi, Luigi, you was just wonderful. I never heard anything like it. Please, Schultz. You don't have to make anything up to make me feel good. I know I was a terrible. What are you talking about, Luigi? I just talked to my wife, Esther. She said the people in the audience was crying. Oh, your Luigi, after your speech, they were so quiet you could hear a pin drop. 
Pim, you could hear a cough drop. Ah, <laughs> uh, smile, Luigi. Mr. Basco, I'm proud of you. Please, please, friends. You really friends. And I'm sorry I talked like I did before. I know I was a big fool with my speech. Now, can I go home? Mr. Basco, may I express my deepest gratitude to you for your remarks? Huh? I never saw such a demonstration. That audience was so touched, they couldn't applaud. Please, mister. I am know I was a bigger failure. There was another man who thought his speech had failed, Mr. Basco. It was at Gettysburg. You may have heard one man applaud before. I was that man. You? Who are you? Hey, Judge Reeves, the audience is ready for you now, sir. Judge? That's a Judge Halliburton Reeves. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry I was delayed, but I am happy because it enabled you and me to hear from a speaker far better equipped to make you feel the meaning of this day. I can only say it took an Italian immigrant, a Mr. Luigi Basco, to make me say today, I am proud that I am an American. He's a proud. I have a speech. He's a proud. 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 Me. What I thought that was going to be one of the worst days of my life was it turned out to be the best. After the park, I'm going to come home and read the Gettysburg Address. I'm going to like the best the way Lincoln has said, this the government is of the people, by the people, and for the people. And to show you how some people are not going to change, I'm going to show this to Pasquale. And he's a said... That's right, Luigi. And if you want the something, that's of the people, by the people, and for the people, I'm going to just do what you want, my daughter Rosa. <laughs> <laughs> the eleven son, Luigi Vasco, the little immigrant. Folks, the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you enjoyed tonight's episode of Life with Luigi, and they'd like to remind you that Wrigley's Spearmint Gum is an ideal taste treat to enjoy between your meals. A stick of Wrigley's Spearmint has lots of delicious, long-lasting flavor. It's satisfying, yet it isn't rich or heavy. You can chew it and enjoy it for as long as you want without spoiling your appetite. For this reason, it's a grand, wholesome treat for the children, too. So keep plenty of refreshing Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum handy in your home for your whole family to enjoy between meals. Chewing Wrigley Spearmint Gum is good fun and good for you. The makers of Wrigley Spearmint Gum invite you to listen next week at this time when Luigi Basco writes another letter to his Mamba Basco in Italy. Life with Luigi was produced and directed by Cy Howard. Mac Benoff writes the script with Lou Dermott. J. Carol Nash has starred as Luigi Basco with Alan Reed as Pasquale, Hans Conrad as Schultz, Jody Gilbert as Rose as Horowitz, and Ken Peters as Olsen. Music is directed by Lud Glutton. Friends, the Wrigley Company invite you to listen to their other program, The Gene Autry Show, every Saturday night over most of these same stations. And be sure to buy the current issue of Quick Magazine, now on the newsstands, where an excellent profile of Life with Luigi can be read. Bob Stevenson speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.